This is a video camera. They used to be quite rare and expensive, but these days you see them everywhere. Most people just use them to shoot home movies of their kids' birthday parties or their family holidays or their sex lives, but here in Nimman, we've discovered a new and unusual use for them. We've found that when you point one of these things at a police officer, they stop behaving like cops. Now, I don't know, maybe it's the memory of Rodney King or any of the other times that the police have been caught out by video cameras breaking their own laws. Whatever the case, the police really don't like these things. And when you turn up at one of their random roadside sniffer dog searches with one, guess what? They pack up the dogs and they go home. Oh, you got two of them. So, any idea why you need um, sniffer dogs for random breath testing? Any comment on that one, officers? You're not wearing a uniform, that means you can probably talk. Any comments on that one? No, you haven't got a tongue either. What's wrong with you guys? Don't you have a conscience? Really? Just doing your job, of course. Just like in the Nuremberg Trials, just like Lieutenant Kelly in Vietnam slaughtering all the little kitties, just like the Manson family, in fact, just doing their job. You got all these number plates? No, oh, I better get them. XBA 286, radio, we'll put that on the net. And there goes the sniffer dog. There they go. And they're only off. Only doing their job. Only doing their job. And what a wonderful job it is. Have a good day. What's it all about? Tell me that, really. Seriously, I mean, for the last two or three years, you guys have been really yeah. reasonably civilised about the whole issue of drugs and drug law reform. Now, all of a sudden, you're going to be Why is that? Not only are you ruining the basic economy of the whole North Coast, i.e. the tourist industry, but you're alienating most of the citizens that live here. Did we scare you off? Oh guys, don't be so sweet, we're just about to start the party! Of course, you can get away with just about anything in a public place. The real challenge is to take your camera into the belly of the beast. Yes. Um, we're just a little bit concerned that he's a minor, he doesn't have an adult with him and he's entitled. We'll move you in a second. Excuse me. Can you turn that off in here? Is there a law that says I have to? What, what's this the law? Act. What's, what what's if that? I turn off the sound? So it's an offence to videotape us. Yeah. It's an offence against the Listening Devices Act. What what clause, what so going to state the actual law? Listening Devices Act, look at that. Which which particular section of the listening device? I'll tell you where it is, but I'm just telling you it's an offence to record us without our permission. Yeah, mate, we've got a listening device outside. You can go outside and film in there, but you can't record any sound in here. You're allowed to film us in here, but we're not allowed to film you. That's right, is that we, correct? We tell you we're going to film oh, you. Well, it's we pretty obvious I'm no, filming I'm you. I'm telling you I don't give permission to do it. But now, if you were filming me in here and I asked for and permission... And you can ask us not to. What would you do? What would be the case then? We have to turn the sound off. Just turn the sound off. Well, if I turn the sound off, is it all right? Can you turn the sound off there? Yeah, you bet. Show me. That's okay. That's it. That's all you need to know. The warrants come from the magistrate. Can we see him? No, you can't. So the can see the magistrate where the magistrate decides right. for We're talking a 16 year old kid. Understand that? Adults Understand that? Doesn't he have the right worried, to have an adult? Sir? Yes. Well, the systematic harassment of the communities been going on in an institutional fashion since 1976. We had marginal status prior to that and certainly there was local harassment and we were always stopped by the police. But in 1976, uh, the local police, 60 of them in fact, raided the community next door to our property, Tunnable Co-op, and basically randomly arrested several dozen people, carted them off in cattle trucks into Lismore, charged them and subsequently all of the charges were dismissed from the courts and that set the tone. Lynette Pike is an anthropologist and recent grandmother. Like many residents of Nimbin, she worries about the long-term effects of prohibition on young people. 
We have regular roadblocks outside the town where people are randomly stopped and searched. Children have seen their parents searched. They've had their homes invaded by police. Um, six o'clock in the morning, the police smash down the door, come charging into the house, and there's always children there. No reason for somebody's here to see anyone. Right? said about the you know, fact that he was only 16 and it was considered... This is one of the school teachers from the school. I think it's actually been extremely damaging for the youth in our community to grow up watching their parents and friends of their parents endure systematic harassment. For some of the, the children in the community, their parents have been jailed. The community next door again, one of the hamlets had all of the adult males in jail at the same time. So there were no adult males in that community and I think that for the particularly the boys in that hamlet, that must have been an extraordinarily devastating period in their lives. And those young guys, and they're all grown up now, they're all in their twenties, how can they have any kind of respect for the police? If you were members of the community who cared about the children and you were in our situation, what would you do? What would you do? So what would be the next step if you were a concerned adult in your own community? Contact legal aid for them. So they've just seen this overreaction on the part of the state to what they consider to be normal. You know, in the same way that some parents sit down and have a beer at night, you know, their parents will sit down and have a joint at night. I've never had dinner with them before. Yeah. I, I, I don't know that well either. Way. But, but I've got kids in the community. We've got an obligation so, yeah. that before he sees the magistrate that we contact legal aid on his behalf and let them know that he's at Lismore and that he has to be put before a magistrate. Mm. And that occurs. They're never, uh, no one is ever put before a magistrate before they see a solicitor or a legal representative. Mm. So that, that would occur in any case. OK, well, we'll go and contact the And he's not being questioned at all? No, not at all. No. Not at all. Not see, well, I'd just like to see it on tape. About this videotape too. Yeah. If later on I find the sound's been recorded, no, I will prosecute you for a breach of the Listen to Voices Act. Do you understand that? Did you do current affairs when they came out here doing the same thing? I'm just Why not? I'm telling Why not? you. Why not? I'm telling you. Why not? I'm telling you. Do you do that when you do your sort of surveillance operations uptown? I'm telling Why not? you. Yeah. I'm, I'm asking no, you. Yeah, but he's I'm asking you, answer. mate. No, Listen, we get, we, we get warrants to obtain listen device material. You have to have a warrant before you can record someone's conversation without their permission. One of the few exceptions to the Listening Devices Act is when you're recording this private conversation in an attempt to protect your own legal rights. Now, the experiences of a lifetime have shown to me that every time I walk into a New South Wales police station my legal rights are under threat and I don't think you have to look very far in history to prove that. The most recent example would probably be in the Sydney suburb of Manly where last year the entire drug squad was found by one of their own internal inquiries to be completely corrupt. This is nothing new. You can follow an unbroken chain of royal commissions, internal inquiries and bent coppers all the way back to the first fleet. Some things just don't seem to change. If it picks up any sound at all, and you play it anywhere, I will breach you for breaching Listen Devices Act. You understand? Why have you said something you're worried about? No. Have you no, broken the law, officer? No, I'm just telling you straight up. Well, why are you threatening me like that? It's not a threat, man. I'm telling you what will happen. It is a threat. You're telling me well, you're going to prosecute you're me. You're going to prosecute him. That is that's tantamount. a threat. Surely that's I a threat. I think I said it was tantamount. You know, I've had enough today. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, that's fine. I think we've had enough. See you later. Yeah. yeah. If you contact the solicitor. Yeah. See ya. What was your name again, sir? Detective Smith. Detective Smith. Sure. Is that a real name? <laughs> How'd you go? That's a good one. I like that. Do you ever get that said to you? We are the criminals. Of course, it's not really fair to blame the cops for all this. In, in many ways, they're just the ham in the middle of the sandwich. No, real change can only come from a political level, and so. 
in the last federal election, the Nimbin Hemp Embassy ran two candidates for the Senate and two candidates for the lower house. Within two days of announcing this, 28 cops raided their headquarters. image of the New South Wales Police Service, given the current climate with the Manly Drug Squad and all the rest of it and the fact that it's pretty obvious to the general public that large sections of the New South Wales Drug Squad, and I specify Drug Squad, large sections of them have always been corrupt and probably always will be as long as the laws remain, and that's become a fact in the public mind. Now, how do you feel an operation like this, mounted against a political party trying to change the laws, looks, how do you feel it affects the public image of the New South Wales Police Service? Well, it shows that the police are doing their job. Uh, they're responding to community outrage that drugs are openly uh, supplied here at 51 Cullen Street. No, no, most people, are, as you can probably see, are um, standing by and having a look. Drivers under there! Yeah! Really, they're just onlookers. You know. 